Here we'll look at a few different graphs, the first of which is a histogram. So these graphs use vertical contiguous bars to represent frequency. So we use these once we have a frequency distribution. The contiguous part just means our bar should always be touching. In a later video, we'll talk about a bar graph and the difference there being that the bars do not touch, whereas here that they do. We'll do this in three different steps. The first step will be to draw and label your X and Y axis. We then label the x-axis with the class boundaries. And then the final step, we'll plot the frequencies and draw the vertical bars. And like I said, the vertical bars do need to be touching. Here's an example of a frequency distribution we had before. So the first step is we need to draw and label our axes. In this particular example, we had IQ, and then the y-axis will be frequency. So that's how we need to label them first. The x-axis then gets class boundaries. Since the lowest class limit is 82, the first boundary would be 81.5. 93 to 94 gives me 93.5. We then have 105.5, 117.5, one twenty nine point five and then our final one is one forty one point five point five so the first class has a frequency of four so let's go ahead and put some notches on our y-axis so we'll make this one ten that makes this five There's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. The first class had a frequency of four, so we just go up to four and then over. The next one was three, so we'll go down to three. The next one was 10, so we'll go all the way up. After that, we had four and then one more class of four. So here is our histogram. The next graph to be used with these frequency distributions is a frequency polygon. Here we'll use lines that are going to connect points plotted for the frequencies at the class midpoints. So rather than vertical bars or anything like that, we're just going to be connecting some lines. And the other important thing here is that this should start and end on the x-axis. So let's do an example. Here we have the frequency distribution we've been dealing with. So we'll start by drawing our axes. And technically we should label them. We have IQ and frequency. Once again, our Y axis will need to go up to 10. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. For the midpoints is the next thing we're going to have to graph on the x-axis. So to find a midpoint of a class, we take the two class limits, so for instance 82 and 93, we add those and divide by 2, which would give us 87.5. The next one, we would once again add 94 plus 105 and divide by 2 to get 99.5. We can continue to do this. The next one would be 111.5. After that, we have 123.5. And then finally, 135.5. So when we constructed frequency, um, frequency distributions to begin with, we mentioned that it's preferable to have an odd class width. And if we have that, that makes these class midpoints here whole numbers. So that's why we prefer that. Our first class has a frequency of four. So we're gonna start by just putting a dot there. The next one was three. We then have 10 and then a four 
and a 4. And now we just need to connect these dots. Remember that we do need to start and end on the x-axis. So we do need to make sure to go up and down to the x-axis. So here's our frequency polygon. Our last graph is going to be an ogive. And this kind of graph represents cumulative frequency rather than just frequency. It's going to start similar to a frequency polygon in the sense that we're going to plot these cumulative frequencies and then connect the dots. However, this one does also start on the x-axis, but it does not end on the x-axis. So that is one difference between an ogive and a frequency polygon. So here's our example. We start by graphing. We have IQ, and our y-axis is actually cumulative frequency, which we'll abbreviate here. We also here are going to use our class boundaries. So we start at 81.5, and then finally 141.5. It will start here at this 81.5. The next one will be four. So we do need to label our axis. This is 25. So we'll just do a 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 and estimate in there. So our first class is 4. So it's somewhere in here. The next one, the cumulative frequency would be 4 plus 3, which is 7. Somewhere in here. 7 plus 10 is now 17. So now we're up somewhere in here. 17 plus 4 would be 21, so right past this line. And then 21 plus 4 is 25. So this is the ogive.